Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Tilal. This week, I'm going to discuss the co-location scandal of 2015 and the latest SEBI order. To my mind, it raises more questions than what you would think from looking at the headlines. In fact, on 13 September, media headlines seem to suggest that the market regulator had completely exonerated the erstwhile management of the National Stock Exchange in what we call the Colo scam of 2015. Some even speculated that all this was being hurriedly done in order to clear the path for the listing of the National Stock Exchange, which, as you know, is almost a monopoly exchange in India, accounts for more than 90% of trading, and people have been waiting patiently for it to list for nearly 10 years or more, much more, in fact. That this order came in the middle of so much of turmoil at the Securities and Exchange Board of India only added to the speculation. But then nothing is as simple as it seems, right? So when you look at the sequence of developments, it is clear that there is really nothing new in this order. In fact, it has only reiterated the exoneration that was done by SEBI already in 2019 by another whole time member. Now, whole time members and the chairman are people on the SEBI board of directors. So it's an order from fairly high up or almost the highest level of the regulatory body. Now, in the bizarre wonderland of SEBI investigation, NSC and its two managed, former managing directors were virtually let off in a week investigation. So in Jan 2023, the 2019 order, which followed an investigation that started around 2016, was largely quashed by the Securities Appellate Tribunal. Okay, so SEBI issued an order, asked for a huge discouragement. It goes to the Appellate Tribunal. In Jan 2023, the Appellate Tribunal all but throws it out, but sends it partly back to SEBI for looking at two main issues. But that's not all. I'm going to come to, to that later. What is more important is that SAT in its order had some scathing criticism of the regulatory body, its investigations, and its contradictory findings. So SEBI's regulation was poor is not something I am saying. It has been said by the Securities Appellate Tribunal. Now, last week, when another full-time member, Kamlesh C. Vashne, issued two orders on the specific directions of SAT, these which were partly sent back to SEBI. The first reaffirmed SEBI's 2019 order that no conclusive evidence of collusion and connivance was found against NSC top officials. The second enhanced the disgorgement for one person, one stockbroker, OPG Securities was part of it. So the earlier disgorgement order against him was 15.75 crore. This has been enhanced to 85.25 crore with 12% interest. Earlier also was 12% interest going back to May 2015. But we'll come to all this later. First, a recap. Like I said, you need to know what the Colo scam is because I'm sure most of you are unaware. You come into the market after 2020 or you have forgotten. So what is a Colo scam? In 2009, NSE introduced colo services or co-location services, which allowed really big institutional investors to park their trading servers within the exchange premises for a fee. Now, this gave them access to high speed data feeds of trades tick by tick, which were fed into really high speed algorithms, which executed crores of trades in milliseconds. So every millisecond and microsecond counted, and that's why they had to be housed right inside the exchange in what is called a server farm. Now, the competition between them was how good is your algo and how fast do you get data? Because faster data meant more profits or less losses. So securing low latency connections for rapid trade was the key. And so what was the scam about? In 2015, a whistleblower wrote to me after he had written to several SEBI officers who had all ignored his complaints. He marked a copy of that letter to me and mentioned how nothing was happening and how NSC officials were selectively allowing brokers, spe specifically named was OPG Securities, who I mentioned earlier, to profit from such preferential allotment to lay lat low latency servers of the exchange. I published it to crowdsource more information. 
in Money Life, the digital publication, and NSC decided that it was defamatory in spite of asking them what they had to say, and they sued me for defamation, a 100 crore defamation suit. They lost the case. We're not going to go into that. The problem of selective access was eventually changed even before this could happen, before a SEBI investigation happened, they moved to a different technology, they introduced load balancers, randomizers. So the original job of saying you start Colo, but you will give fair and equal access, we're talking about large institutional investors with algo trading. What had not happened until this whistleblower letter was all set right, leading to several SEBI orders, a huge investigation and a change in the top management after 23 years. All this happened after the defamation case was thrown out. Now, we have detailed all of this in a book called Absolute Power. You may want to read it. Now, let's come to the next issue. What did SAT say about SEBI's shoddy investigation in its Jan 2023 order? What it said was SEBI's core investigation remained weak, contradictory, and failed to conclusively establish long doing even as it concluded that NSE's management had not provided fair and equitable access. So huge disgorgement order because NSE's management had failed, but absolutely without no any collusion, connivance or corruption. So says SEBI. That's the kind of investigation it did after appointing multiple consultants, multiple committees, school of business and what have you. This is why SAT's Jan 23 ruling was so caustic about the regulator. And hear what it has to say. Para 255 of the order says, and I'm reading, before we conclude, we must observe that serious allegations were made against a first level regulator, namely NSE. SEBI should have been proactive and should have conducted the investigation seriously. We find that SEBI had adopted a slow approach and in fact was placing a protective cover over NSE's alleged misdeeds. It is only when questions were placed on the floor of the parliament that SEBI woke up and instituted an investigation. The scope of investigation was limited and not made under section 11.4, but was conducted by another agency under section 11.C. In our opinion, considering the gravity of the alleged allegations, SEBI should have itself conducted an investigation stroke inquiry instead of delegating it to NSC to conduct an investigation. It is strange and it does not stand to reason how SEBI directed NSC to conduct an investigation against itself. It's clear that a casual approach was adopted. End of quote. In fact, NSC was repeatedly asked by SEBI to investigate itself and appoint people, which is bizarre, but nobody said a word. Now, here's what it has to say, SAT has to say, about the SEBI full-time members' contradictory orders. It says, and I'm quoting, it's not worthwhile to call out all the contradictions, but it is suffice to state that the same officer who passed the orders on the same date cannot make a different analysis on the same subject or issue. So what had he done? In one order, the whole-time member said, early login, which is central to the COLO issue, did not give the broker any advantage. This was to help NSC because he was looking at the NSC matter. In the second order on the same day, same issue, he said that against OPG securities, that early login had given an advantage. You can read more about all of this if you're interested either in the book or in Money Life. Now, SAT overturned SEBI's order, which had, like I said, without finding wrongdoing on the part of management, had said you failed to give fair access, so six month ban on the exchange, disgorgement of 624.89 crore with interest, which amounts to about 1000 crore, and then a clawback of 25% of the salaries of two former MDs, Ravi Narayan and Chitra Ramakrishnan. So SAT said all this goes out because you haven't proved anything, you conducted a shoddy investigation. Instead, it said we agree that the management, especially as a first time regulator, failed in due diligence, failed to have to ensure fair and equal access, and in fact, even act on things fast. So a hundred crore penalty was levied. So while SAT imposed a hundred crore penalty on NSC as a deterrent for failing in due diligence, when it came to OPG, SAT also concurred with SEBI. It said that disgorgement it's going to throw out, but it's sending it back to SEBI to relook 
at the manner in which disgorgement number was arrived at and again whether there was collusion between OPG and NSU officers. The signal here is very clear. SAT finds it hard to believe that a broker kept getting early access without any collusion with NSC members. Now, what is happening to this case? So SAT has an order. Immediately after the order, both SEBI and OPG Securities quickly ran to the Supreme Court of India with an appeal. These appeals are pending. When SEBI filed an appeal, the Supreme Court did not entirely listen to it. So there's no stay to either of them on the SAT order. In fact, the Supreme Court asked SEBI to return 300 crores because remember 1000 crore penalty with interest, they said 300 crores has to be returned to the exchange. If they rule against it, exchange will pay it back. That was the undertaking. OPG also did not get a stay. Now, the interesting part here is that SEBI has gone against the disgorgement part. Why did you cancel the 1000 crore disgorgement? But it has not appealed the charge of collusion and conspiracy with NSC officials. And you wonder why this happened. It's a big question mark. Now, what happens next? SAT order remains. So within 45 days, SEBI was supposed to look at it again. That whole thing has got delayed because of appeals, you know, the various processes. We finally come to the 13th September order by Mr. Washney. Question is, did he exonerate NSC? So SEBI's process was to first issue a fresh show cause notice to NSC officials. Here again, the same officials. So it's not that you're going to find something different after six years when you issue a show cause notice for a quick 45 day. So did they give it to the right people is a question that I'm asking. But same officials, another notice, obviously the same conclusions, nothing new to be found. Consequently, Mr. Vashne has merely reiterated the 2019 findings that there was no case made out under the prohibition of fraudulent and unfair trade practices. He also upheld the failure to ensure fair and equitable treatment. A nice omnibus clause saying, you didn't do your job, but you're not guilty, you're not incompetent, you're not corrupt. Some people got advantage, you didn't do anything about it, even though there were complaints. But, you know, apart from a general failure, there was no collusion. That was his conclusion as well. Now, some would say that SEBI's weak investigation has already set the stage for it. Who you serve show cause notices to has been a question that a lot of people have been asking inside and outside the NSC. But the penalty of 100 crore as of now still stands unless the Supreme Court rules otherwise. The mood of the Supreme Court is already clear. It asked SEBI to re refund 300 crores to NSC. Now let's come to the OPG order. This gets more interesting because earlier it was 15.75 crore plus 12% interest. It has gone up to 85.25 crore plus a six month ban on trading in addition to the five year debarment that was ordered earlier. This was for gaining a trading ad advantage through unfair access to the secondary server. Why is this order interesting? Because OPG's legal team attacked SEBI every step of the way to delay, to question every bit of its decisions, obviously without success. So expanding the scope of the time happened because of that. They questioned the time period, what period to what period are you looking at for disgorgement and unfair income? It was increased one year on both sides. The methodology for calculating disgorgement, the inclusion of cash market and currency derivative transactions this time around, there was an extensive cross-examination of all consultants involved in the investigation. It attempted to attack the competence and credibility of the consultant from the Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. Hundreds of questions were posed in cross-examination. Documents were investigated. There were issues raised about the documents. Every consultant was cross-examined. But the SEBI WTA, Mr. Vashney, was clearly undeterred by the split screen. In fact, small concession that he made was that the consultants had worked out a disgorgement figure of 132.28 crore. This was reduced by him to 85 crore plus interest. So the Shokar's notice had proposed a higher figure of 132.28, which was down to 85 plus. Mr. Washney also held that no collusion was found between NSE officials and 
OPG Securities because after the second show cause notice, nothing new was found in SEBI's investigation. He also rejected another charge of crowding out. I'm not going to get into it. It's not relevant. So two SEBI investigations and a SAT order have now held that OPG Securities profited from repeated unauthorized access to secondary servers despite warnings because NSC officials failed to take any decisive or corrective action. Now, if this happened without any collusion or connivance with the broker, he repeatedly breaks the rules. You do nothing. The system continues allowing him to log in at will to the secondary server. Then this failure can only be attributed to gross incompetence on the part of NSE officials since SEBI says there's no collusion. Remember, they are fully aware that every millisecond and microsecond of faster access counts, but they're doing nothing. They're just issuing warnings. The broker ignores them. A few others ignore them. Can we really pass this off as incompetence? Well, after a six year investigation, that's all SEBI has able, been able to come up with. So. The answer, according to me, lies in which officials SEBI chose to target, what was left out, what was investigated, and whether the conclusions were pre-decided. Clearly, OPG is not going to stop at this. He's going to use every legal avenue to fight SEBI. This, so the legal wrangling will continue in the Supreme Court. Importantly, this, remember, is just one of five or six orders in the Colo matter. And this Colo matter dates back to 2015. We are in 2024. So NSC, in fact, has just issued a huge bonus. It's hoping to settle all this, pay up penalties in some places without contest, you know, as opposed to the decision that it took in 2015 to contest everything and appeal. It has said, we'll settle the matter. We'll pay up what you charge us. Forget about returning money. It's a face saver on both sides. It will close the issue because SEBI is not going to come up with anything more. If anything, there's only going to be further embarrassment of another kind for the securities market regulator. What has been SEBI's reaction? You know, I did a video blog on this just a few weeks ago. SEBI has not even bothered to respond to NSC's request. In fact, this is yet another example why the market regulator already facing a serious credibility crisis needs a complete overhaul of its processes, priorities, as well as its operations. It's not just about the chairperson. It's not just about the code of conduct. It's about its competence, whether it can conduct investigations, why it farms out investigations, why does it still not have the competency to do it in-house? Unfortunately, the people who have to decide on all this is the finance ministry and the government of India. And the government has remained silent about everything to do with SEBI, indicating a complete lack of concern about the long-term damage that this can inflict on the capital market. If you agree, if you're waiting for NSC to be listed, if you're tired of what you're hearing about the regulator, please subscribe and spread the word. Because until more people are agitated, nothing changes. Thank you.